Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome back to OMG MotoGP. My name is Harry Benjamin, and alongside me is former Grand Prix rider and British champion Keith Ewing. And Keith, well, you know I had to uh, jump back in for an emergency episode, particularly uh, on this topic. If you haven't seen the news, as reported in the Financial Times, Liberty Media, the owners of Formula One, are in exclusive talks to buy Dorna in a four billion euro deal. So Keith, is MotoGP about to get bought by Formula One? I think it is. Or it's, it's about to get bought by Liberty Media, who will own the major shareholding. I mean, what you got to bear in mind is is the, MotoGP, like all of these things that are owned by uh, big investment companies, are always for sale. I think it's a fallacy if people think that it's there just for the sport. It's not. It's, it's owned by, Dorna is owned by Bridgepoint. Um, I think they've got a. I've written it down somewhere. 39% shareholding in Bridgepoint, 38% holding by the Canadian Pension Plan Investment Board, um, and then 23% are owned by private investors, such as Carmelo Espeleta and his family. Carmelo Espeleta, CEO of Dorna, of course. I mean, like all of these corporates, when you start looking at the train that they go through of ownership it is quite daunting to get to the bottom of who owns what at the end of the day but Bridgepoint are the major shareholders Dorna and MotoGP has always been for sale since day one I think there was a quote somewhere that I saw that, that the majority shareholders buy things to sell things that's a quote from Carmelo um, so in actual fact I mean it's no it should be no real surprise I suppose the the question is 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 it going to be good for our sport at the end of the day? And that's I think the crux of the matter that we we can get into. Um, you know, like if you Bridgepoint, for instance, manage forty one billion, uh, I think it's dollars worth of assets at the moment. So they're they're a, they're a massive investor, and they are there to enhance the value of things before they flip them and turn them over to make more money. That's how they do it. It's all got that horrible, distasteful feel about it. I've got to say, most people will be going, yeah. But that's how corporates operate. They, you know, they buy and sell. You've only got to look at the BT thing in recent times. You know, TNT have taken over BT. That's just in the broadcast world. You know, BT felt they had to have a sports channel because Sky Sports was running away with dish sales. It's always much more complex than it actually looks. Um, even though we would all prefer to boil it down to just sport, it is never just sport. No, and when you look at what, because I think the the big question, as you you alluded to, there is is this going to be positive or negative for, for MotoGP and those watching it? And I, I was just I've been looking into how things have changed since Liberty Media came into Formula One, and, and previously Formula One was kind of governed by by Bernie Eccleston, who was very anti social media, anti appealing to the younger generation he always believed that well they're not the ones that are going to buy a rolex the 70 year old man with plenty of money is going to buy the rolex why do we need to appeal to the younger generation <laughs> where's your rolex king you're not quite there yet that's why you're too young i'm from essex <laughs> around my ankle <laughs> but I, I had a look so liberty came in uh 2017 and their goal as you said there it's not it wasn't just a sport they wanted to turn formula one into an entertainment brand and bring it that success through opening it up on social media, more broadcast deals, lucrative broadcast deals, growing and cracking America. And as a result, uh, since um, 2016, the Formula One Group's shares have increased by 250%. Now, to the average viewer, that's no one's going to care about the, the, the share percentage. But what they will care is about how or can they watch MotoGP? Is the spectacle going to improve? I'm going to be interested to see what Liberty have on the table what their idea is to enhance MotoGP. Different brands, Formula One, people turn up at Formula One to be stood there in front of some gormless looking person I've never heard of on the grid somewhere. People turn up to just be part of it. People pay £400 to sit in a grandstand seat all day long and not move from it. You know, different people go to Formula One, different people follow Formula One. MotoGP, completely different cat of fish. As it is at the moment. Now, your argument, and it's a good one, is where does it go from here? Um, what has Formula One got that MotoGP hasn't got? What can, what will cross over between the two types of sports? Um, at the moment, not much. Um, our demographic is completely too too old to start with. Um, can't teach new dog, old dogs new tricks. Um, our young demographic is not there. 
something we've argued about. We've talked about a lot on ONG Motor GP, a lot that, that it needs working on. If you want my opinion, which I suppose that's why I'm here, I think that nah, we good. I think that <laughs> I think that this will be good for Motor GP. Now, a lot of people are screaming down their phones at the moment and screaming at their screens saying, never. The reason why is I think that this deal will not go through unless the EU commission allows the merger. At the end of the day, we've got two of the top branded motorsport series in the world, F1 and MotoGP. So one company owning all of that. Where I think that, that, that Liberty could be smart and could, could make, make this good for all of us is is selling off. They will be forced to sell off something like World Superbikes that they inherit with MotoGP. Dawner own World Superbikes. Dawner own Junior Grand Prix, Talent Cups, the new Mini GP World Series. They own the Rookies Cup. All of that gets wrapped up in this. And I believe that that Dawner, the new owners, Liberty, if that is to be the case, and to by all intents and purposes, it looks like the deal is done. We're just waiting for announcements now. Um, if that is the case and Liberty do take it over, I think that by the time it's gone through the commission that will take a, a while or two to work this out, whether it will be allowed to merger or not, um, they will have to sell off something. So in that case, we'll suddenly have, in my view, they'll have to let go of World Superbikes. That will be the concession. And I think that will be good for us. That will be great from a spectator point of view. Dorner have had World Superbikes for too long and it hasn't really gone anywhere. And yet World Superbikes at the moment is back at the top of its game. So somebody that actually gets into World Superbikes and starts to move that back to where it used to be, it will be a direct competitor to MotoGP. And I think he's got a bit of a head start with the way it's going at the moment in, in World Superbikes. So that could be a good thing. MotoGP, like I mentioned demographic before, demographic is old now. Um, it's all people that are, are you know north of 35, pretty much, that have got the money. Um, youngsters are not really being encouraged into it. Silverson don't really do enough. You know, British Superbikes don't... Um, really promote people going into to MotoGP. Um, and that could be another byproduct of a sale as well. Moto America, BSB, all of these uh, domestic championships could actually find themselves with a little bit of an opportunity here, particularly if World Superbike is elevated into a, a much bigger brand if it's separated from the MotoGP owners. And I think that that is an opportunity as well. I sniff opportunity here. I, I do, honestly. I think that we've, we've asked the question for so long. Is MotoGP at the top of its game? Well, maybe it is at the moment. And also, you've got to consider the, the CEO is 78 years old. Carmelo Espeleta is 78 years old. He and his immediate family have done a brilliant job with other, you know, Manel Arroyo back in the day, who was, was you know, director of Barcelona Football Club and so on and so forth. Some fairly heavy hitters in Spain. But maybe it needed moving about. Maybe we, maybe we need, maybe the time has come. Carmelo has got to the Bernie Eccleston stage in his life, perhaps, where he needs to let go and it needs to go to, to, to younger dynamic hands and maybe Liberty have that team on board. I'm still, this is all with a proviso. I want to see what Liberty are proposing to make our sport better um, before I, um, before I get behind them. I'm a full, I'm a full on Dorna supporter. You know that. I think Camilo Espeleta, Carlos Espeleta, his son, who's come through as an intern working behind the scenes with Erta originally before coming into to, to the management uh, position that he's in. Then there's a sister that's in there as well. She's She's been part of the, the whole deal. And if you met Carmelo's wife, very smart, intelligent woman, you just know it's a, it's a kind of dynamic family. But as it got, is that dynasty sort of coming to an end? Is it time to sell out? Four billion quid, I would say well, probably, yeah. <laughs> well, much like, you know, Bernie uh, sold out in the end uh, once uh, Liberty came in. It's worth noting just a couple, a couple of quotes of what you said. Going back to the scrutiny this deal will face because of the competition laws, etc. Um, worth remembering that um, there was a private equity firm called CVC who did once own Formula One and MotoGP, but then were forced to sell MotoGP back in 2006 as a condition of buying F1 with all the European breaking of tree uh, concerns. So it's a good point you raised there about potentially this could be uh, Dorna and or Liberty selling off. Um, uh, at that, at that time, bikes. though, at that time, the, the World Superbike and MotoGP were completely separate. Uh, at that time, uh, World Superbike wasn't part of the package that Dorna owned or were about to inherit. I think they got that late. Well, so it's even more likely now, then, that they'll be forced to sell something That's else. That's why I think that if the, if, the, if the regulators have got their eyes shut just a little bit, if they're squinting through squinty eyes just to try and make this deal work, um, 
then the get out of jail card really is the 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 selling off of the of some of the you know moto e for instance is part of the motor gp package will that you know there could be some concessions that liberty could in their takeover will will it have the same four billion dollar budget and and price tag if uh liberty have to give up world superbike and give up moto e or other concessions to make the moto gp merger with formula one actually happen you know these are the, the horse trading that's going to go on behind in the bike sheds well yeah, exactly that but and coming back to whether this will be a good thing or not i i do agree i think this will be a good thing when you look at what liberty did with formula one they made the product overall in all aspects better that's backed up by figures financially, TV deals, social media deals, and, and who was actually watching at home in terms of age groups. What MotoGP doesn't need from Liberty Media, in my opinion, is improvement, I think, really, to, to the spectacle of the actual racing. That's actually, okay, round one wasn't that great, but MotoGP inherently is consistently better racing than Formula One is. There are more, there's more likelihood of different winners, uh, they're closer matched. It, in, in that respect, they brought in sprint races as well to try and liven things up. They're already kind of on it with trying to make it more of an entertainment package. But what I think Liberty Media can really do is they can make more of the personalities within the paddock. Liberty Media, Formula One under Liberty Media gave Netflix unprecedented access, behind the scenes access to create one of the best sports documentaries of all time. It continues to be so, which provides a gateway drug for people to enjoy Formula One. That is, in my opinion, should be priority number one for uh, a Liberty coming over and uh, taking uh, over MotoGP to bring out these personalities within the motorbike world. And the other side of it is also TV deals and broadcast deals. That's the bread and butter, right, of how Adorna makes its money. You need more expansive broadcast deals. There's a, if, if you're subscribed to our Patreon, you can listen to um, James Whitten down the pub that you did the other week, Keith. And he made a really good point where he said, in the UK and other countries, but people just aren't interested. There's just not the interest in, in motorbikes and motor GP racing. So that's going to be the number one priority, right? The Liberty Media to try and gauge and regain that interest. And that comes through almost kind of coming up with enforced deals through TNT or whoever it might be to have free to air more regularly that is allowed to be promoted. ITV broadcast the last round free to air, but they weren't allowed to promote it at all on social media. And then you go, what's the point in that? So that is the, it's those kind of things, in my opinion. It's it's the it's the bringing out the personalities and the behind the scenes in the paddock. It's making it more easily accessible. It's expanding MotoGP um, world feed service. Like Formula One has introduced F1 TV. It's paid, it's paid subscription service. It's only available in certain countries, but it's one of the best broadcasts out there. MotoGP under a liberty with more, perhaps budget and more more resources should hopefully do something similar and and that's where i see this being a massive win for my system yeah i can uh, pick up on all of those points to some extent but i don't think um, we have the time for it at the end of the day it's refresh yeah. and i think we're due for a refresh in motor gp i think that we've been banging the drum about demographic we've been banging the drum about investment the drive to survive series although incidentally drive to survive this year seems to have tanked um, for Formula One, I see the figures are well low on on um, pick up on that. Well, in the new they, yeah, they, um, they were in the first week, but in the first month they were actually in, uh, better. So there, there's a bit of skew on that. But it's a different, it is a different sport completely. Um, the situation that Liberty have, and I'm sure they have the wherewithal and the skill to promote it in the right way to move it to wherever they want to move it to. I think there's plenty of headroom in MotoGP. You're right. We've got a great sport, but it doesn't seem to be hitting the mark when it comes to uptake um, from viewerships, from attendances are pretty good, I suppose, at the end of the day. But there is an opportunity here. Liberty obviously smell an opportunity. They've just spent $4 billion on something that they're not going to carry forward and, and make it into something much bigger. That's an obvious statement. Um, I look at it in a positive way. That I think, yes, they can do something for MotoGP. There'll be a right old hoo-ha and an upset. No one likes the change. I don't think they can change the rules quite as easily as um, as uh, you might have alluded to just a moment ago and try to do anything with this the sporting side of it because the manufacturers are fairly well embedded in that, as they are in Formula 1. I don't think Liberty were able to do too much with the Formula 1 rules because of what's involved with the manufacturers. The same, the same thing goes with GP. They're not going to be able to do anything with that. 
what they will do is I think they, if the commission, and I would encourage it, if anybody ever asked me for what it's worth, I would encourage the, the, the mergers commission or whatever it is, the EU commission to look at these things from the monopolies point of view, um, to force them to sell world superbike. World superbike picked up by another group of enthusiastic newbies, um, would be something a little bit special and would be in competition with motor GP. So suddenly we've got the competition that we've always wanted, you know, the production based series versus the, the, the prototype series, um, both of them going really, really well. I mean, Superbike is entertaining, it's easy, it's accessible. Uh, all the things you want it to be is there at the moment. MotoGP, a little bit elitist, but without the kind of elite viewership that we would expect from that kind of prototype series at the moment. So I think it's positive. I think the way it's done is going to be interesting. Um, we can do without, we can do with a smooth transition if it's going to happen that way. There are other things, of course, as well to one side of that, the charity side of things. I mean, MotoGP is embedded in Two Wheels for Life, for instance, the the, the MotoGP charity, um, headline charity that does so much work. It's gonna, there's going to be a lot of sort of anxious moments from that point of view, but that could turn out to be positive as well. Um, Two Wheels for Life is a brilliant charity. MotoGP, Dorna and the Carmelo Espeleta family have been behind it for a long time now. In fact, I think they're on the board. I think um, uh, Carmelo's wife is on the board at uh, Two Wheels for Life. Well, if we can have something like that that moves across into Formula One as well, we could have a, a, a massive benefit in the, in the charity department as well. I mean, I think there's things in MotoGP that Liberty have recognized are, are powerful and worth following and pushing further. I, I take you back to what Carmelo Espeleta said. That the majority shareholders buy things to sell things. You know, Liberty might not be quite in that marketplace as Bridgepoint were, but certainly they are there to enhance the product to make it bigger and better. Um, and for that, it gets my vote. It, it gives Liberty the chance as well to prove that its success in growing the popularity of F1 uh, can can be replicated. And, and he, I wonder if, if this does go through, and it's worth reminding that time of recording, this is it's going off of an article for the Pilot Times. There's no smoke that fire, but everybody has not, no one has commented on this yet. Um, that can give you all sorts of indication as to what's going on in the background, of course, as well. But I wonder how much crossover this could lead to as well, because I know we've spoken about the highly unlikely of a MotoGP race or something happening on the same weekend, the same track uh, for a Formula One. But I wonder if there'll be more demonstrations uh, on on in the build-ups to weekends, because the Australian Grand Prix in Melbourne um, last week now, um, Jack and Mick Doohan were both there. You had Jack Doohan going around in, in old uh, Formula One cars. I think they were old Renault cars because he's associated with the RP Formula One team. And uh, and, and his father um, was going around uh, on old 500 CTs. So that in itself is just a little bit of promotion of, of, of motorbike and car. And I wonder if we might see a bit more of that with Liberty wanting to give Formula One eyes those who are already watching it, Charles. Look at this two-wheel series. Well, you might like it. Yeah, well, I mean, there might be a bit of that, but I don't think it will work so much, to be honest. I mean, I'm, I'm very cynical when it comes to those kind of um, ramming those demos down the down your throat. And also, the the, the chances of doing a, a car and bike series on the same day, it just ain't going to happen. The degradation of tyres, the, the, the wear of the track, so on and so forth will be difficult to get over, and I can't imagine that working. Where I can see the collaboration working immediately is when you've got a world, we've got a globe that's getting smaller and I can see the the, the juggling of the um, dates as much as they already try to do it as well as they can do. I mean, we've, we've had Formula One and a MotoGP uh, on at the same weekend um, recently and a World Superbike on at the same weekend as well. They'll be trying to avoid all of that. Um, and maybe by doing that, they can have a, a, you know, a race in Indonesia for one particular championship and a race in the States for the other particular championship of the same weekend. So, you you know, the on-site um, attendance is not affected by the fact that you've got two on at the same weekend. I don't know how they're going to do it. Um, if I was that bright, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. <laughs> but the point being is, is that this has been on the cards for a long time. Liberty are, you know, movers and shakers. You know, you've only got to look at what they've owned in the past. I mean, Bridge, did Bridgepoint, I think Bridgepoint once owned all three media, actually. I seem to, in the back of my head, all three media, which is this, you know, 40 odd production companies, actually, including North One Television, who shoot um, MotoGP for TNT, used to be for BT, but for, for TNT. So 
all three media own North One Television. And all three media was owned by Bridgepoint, who are the owners of Dorna or the major shareholders of Dorna. You know, it comes back to what I said right at the beginning of this conversation. Like they're trying to follow the trail of the money. Everyone's swallowing everyone. Big gulps going on here. So I wonder what the plan will be. I mean, uh, Dan Rossomondo was brought in by Dorna to, to add a bit of an edge from a commercial point of view. He'll be, I'm sure, right behind this deal with Liberty. That will be his... Um, yeah, you know, he's come at the right time to make that kind of thing move. Uh, it's rich enough to tempt Bridgepoint into selling. It's always been for sale. It's you know it was two million bucks a, a two billion bucks sorry a while ago. Um, you know it, it's time. The time is there. Um, and the fact that you've said already it's exclusive conversations. When you get to the exclusive part of a conversation, that means that there's only one person in the running. There's only one person that Bridgepoint, Dorna are taking seriously uh, as, as a takeover. Uh, and that seems to be Liberty. Well, you would be, you would be doing it given their track record. Um, so Keith, is this Liberty takeover, if it does happen overall, this is a positive thing for both the GP. We agreed on that. In all my years of being embedded in our sport, I think we've got to the point where the, the, Rules actually on track are very, very good. We've got the, the market in place now for, for the races. We've got sprint races. We've got everything. I think we're fairly well topped out with um, where we're going with the current situation. So I will say with a reservation that, yes, I believe this is a positive event. And I think that it would be good for MotoGP going forward, um, particularly if they're forced to sell off World Superbikes and we can have World Superbikes as a decent competitor against MotoGP. Um, that bit I'm quite excited about, bye. All right, then, well, look, we'd love to know uh, what you think about this as well. Uh, do uh, get it in touch in the comments uh, below. And uh, this is an evolving news story, so we'll uh, we'll keep a track of it as it all unfolds. But uh, for the time being, our emergency extra episode, uh, we'll bring it to a close there. Have a great weekend, whatever you are. Um, and just a few uh, parish notices as well. Uh, we, we really would appreciate your support on our newly launched Patreon page. We can't keep doing this program without your support. Uh, so hopefully there's tons of stuff that is on there that you can get early access to uh, interviews already on there. Uh, if you haven't heard already, what well, Ben Speech is available now anyway, but we've got Michael Laverty's on there, Taylor McKenzie, uh, James Whitson, all available exclusively on Patreon. Uh, so do have a look in there. Also, we're going to do a, a listener question episode next week with the whole team. So me, Keith, uh, Pete McLaren's going to join along with Renita and Amy Reynolds going to be back on the panel as well. So it's going to be a big old uh, question and answer session. If you want to get in touch, uh, we'll only do questions uh, from listeners who are uh, engaged with our Patreon. So do head over. The link is in the bio below. So if you want your question answered, submit it through Patreon. You have to be a signed up member and we will get your questions answered. All right, I think that's just about it. Thank you very much for listening. Like and subscribe wherever you may be. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.